the house. And so there was some conflict with rich homie Quan. Um, and so we believe that in the latter part of 2014, what Mr. Donovan Thomas Sr. would testify to is that his son decided to not have as much of a relationship with both Jeffrey Williams or Brian Birdman Williams. And so he began to distance himself from the two of them. Um, there was a, a specific encounter that he remembers very, um, very vividly, which was a video shoot. I believe it was Mr. Jeffrey Williams' video shoot. And when Mr. Donovan Thomas Sr. and Mr. Donovan Thomas Jr. went to the video shoot, um, they saw Mr. Jeffrey Williams there, they saw Brian Williams there, and they saw another TIG artist there. However, the owner of TIG was unaware of this video shoot and was not present. At that moment, Mr. both of the Thomases left, and at that point, that's when really the tension or the frustration developed, and he did not want to deal with anything that was not TIG records. And so we're talking about October 2014, November 2014, later in the year, that there was this distancing between the two, which is opposite of what um, we believe that the defense is trying to purport, that there was this great friendship in January 2015, because that was not the case. Um, and so specifically, there are two conversations that Mr. Um, Donovan Thomas Jr., excuse me, Sr., remembers his son having with him. These were Which concerns um, Mr. Lamar, Rich Homie Kwan, and neither side really should be able to say, it, it seems that the defense wants to bar the state from being able to say, didn't call this witness at trial, which obviously they concede they have no right to do and say they have no intention of doing and they would not be permitted to do such. Um, but at the kind of flip side of the same coin, the defense seems to maybe be suggesting that they would like to test to, to present that the state could have but did not call that witness. And I would not permit that either because we're clearly nowhere near unfortunately, the end of the state's case. Um, and obviously, uh, Mr. Lamar has now passed, and so we don't know whether they would have called that witness or not. So I would permit the defense to make that kind of a presentation either. So I um, trust that everybody understands um, what they are, would not be permitted to do. Um, and then we have, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Good day, Your Honor, and good day, everyone. Good morning. So I understand your ruling obviously abides by it, but what I'd like the record then to show, if you don't find this to be um, changing, the state sent us lists of witnesses mm -hmm. on a short list that they were going to call Mr. Lamar, who's a performer known as Rich Homie Kwan. This was well before September 5, 2024, when he, um, God forbid, passed unexpectedly. So to me, and the state has put in evidence mm -hmm. over objection that starting in the fall of 2014, Mr. Lamar and Jeffrey Williams don't get along, and Mr. Lamar is with Mr. Donovan Thomas, who doesn't get along with Jeffrey right. Williams. And it's all, to me, it's all made up. It, it's not supported. Obviously, the jury can make that determination. But I think that it is important that the state, in writing, put the, the predecessor court, as well as the, the uh, Mr. Williams et al., on notice that they were going to call Mr. Lamar. They filed their service of a subpoena and they don't call him to support this, you know, supposed beef. And I can't do anything about his prior statements now because it would be frivolous under 24-8-807, which is rarely used. It's frowned upon and has to have the same guarantees as a dying declaration or something. It's, it's not like that. He, he gave interviews um, throughout all the years talking about his close relationship with Jeffrey Williams. And if you let that in, that's great with me. But I'm assuming you're not going to let it in, so I wasn't going to try to get it in because... I don't think that that's a dying declaration type of statement. So I'm stuck. So I would like the jurors to know that, um, unfortunately, he passed, and this the state stated that they would um, call him as a witness and subpoena him. And if the state has reasons that they didn't call him, that's fine. I understand I'm opening a door, but that's why I put it in writing. That's my motion. All right. Well, I mean, if the state's case were over with, then that would be a different argument. But it is not as though the state's witness list has stayed in anything like 
at any semblance of order during this trial. So, um, I mean, I just, I don't think that you've, I mean, if you can get a concession out of the state that they weren't going to call him, even if he stayed alive, that would also be different, but I don't think that we've got that situation. I understand the ruling. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, and then we have face-to-face -face conversations again in about, he believes it was late, it was fall of 2014, and specifically his son came to him con very concerned, thinking that Rich Homie Kwan was going to leave TIG Records, that he expressed to his father that he was trying to show um, Rich Homie Kwan everything, you know, showing him the studio that they had built for him, and really trying to convince him to stay with TIG and not go over to Cash Money Records. And the reason why that is relevant, Your Honor, is we believe one of the theories of why this murder occurred is there was a desire to have Rich Homie Kwan on Cash Money Records, and two people were preventing that from happening. Corey Lamar, who is the father of the Quantas Lamar, as well as um, Mr. Donovan Thomas Jr. And those two individuals were preventing that from occurring. And so these conversations that he was having, is not specifically towards Jeffrey Williams, but specifically towards his concern with Brian Birdman trying to steal Rich Homie Kwan from um, TIG and bring him over to Cash Money Records. As far as um, this having some guarantee of trustworthiness, that's why we believe that you need to hear from, his, from Mr. Thomas yourself. Generally, in these hearings, Your Honor, as you are aware, the court can assess credibility um, from the witness itself. Okay, let's assume that I do that. How are you going to get over the confrontation clause? Your that's, Honor, that's, this is not testimonial really because oh, conversation. I, I, oh, I disagree with you. Well, Your Honor, it is testimonial. It's not testimonial because testimonial evidence is evidence that's made directly to the police. No, this is not. Yeah. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I, I'll bring some case law, Your Honor, but testimonial evidence is evidence that is made in preparation for trial, generally to law enforcement. This okay, is not, even if it's even if it's not testimonial, you still got a confrontation clause issue. How is how are the how are the defendants gonna But this it, is why this is a residual hearsay, Your no, Honor, but because residual hearsay this, if, if if you're gonna introduce it against the defendant, it's still gotta pass the con confrontation clause. No, Your, your Honor, when I, you're talking about I, I confrontation. Disagree, I disagree with you about that. I, it's gotta pass the confrontation clause. In fact, there are but you all like to slight Carlson a fair bit, so let me let me go back to what Mr. Carlson says about the constitutional considerations. While much of the evidence offered under 807 will pass Sixth Amendment muster, cases state that if a hearsay statement is testimonial, confrontation clause prevents its admission at trial, even if it falls within the hearsay exception, unless the declarant statement is unavailable and the defendants had a prior opportunity to cross examine the declarant. So you're still the issue you're still going to have is well, is is just general confrontation of this particular witness, and then also. I, I'm concerned about just the nexus in terms of what you're what you're trying to get into at this point. When you, I guess, the, the nexus being that if of what exactly Mr. Thomas is going to testify to. I mean, you laid out for me kind of a kind of a a relationship driven or or. or I don't. I don't see the nexus. That's. I'm having a hard time seeing that. Which nexus, Your Honor? So I can be clear. So I can the nexus in terms of what does. Mr. Thomas's statements about his son, because finally you boiled it down to there's two conversations in the fall of 2014 that you want to get into. Have you reduced those to writing? Okay, Your Honor, it's in it's in a summary on page 44 and 45 of Mike Sprinkle's supplemental report that was turned over in discovery. In discovery one back in July of 2022. Now you need to all print that because I don't have it. So you need to print it for me. But I will print it. But the next is, and I want to make sure I. Because I, I, the next, I mean, because it, it's you're telling you're telling me that senior had conversations with junior. Junior was concerned that um, the that the basically there was some pilfering that may have gone on in terms of artists. But what does that have to do with Mr. Williams and any of the other because defendants? Rich, sure, specifically Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams and Rich Homie Kwan were part of that group called Rich Gang. You've heard about testimony about Rich right. Gang in yes, here. And so at that point, Rich Homie Kwan was a part of TIG Records. He was not a part of Cash Money. So they were trying, but Mr. Williams was a part of Cash Money. So, the, so we have TIG, Rich Homie Kwan. You have Mr. Williams either loosely associated or having some more affiliation with Cash Money than Rich Homie Kwan. Birdman, who owns Cash Money, is trying to pull Rich Homie Kwan over to Cash Money. He is, okay. that is an issue because Mr. Donovan Thomas is trying to keep Rich Homie Kwan over to TIG. So there's some conflict, there's some tension there. At the end of the day, if Rich Homie Kwan doesn't come over to cash money, they can't, 
do everything that they, that they need to do as far as albums, as far as the music, as far as any of those things. And so that can essentially affect, at least we can present that to the jury, what Mr. Williams can do at that time as far as his career, as far as what's going to happen with his career. And there's, so, there's some tension and some conflict because Donovan is trying to keep him on one side and they are pull, trying to pull him over to another side. And there's conflict and there's tension. And what Mr. Donovan Thomas expressed to his father is that he began distancing himself not just from Birdman, but from Jeffrey Williams. The defense has continued to purport that at the time of January 2015, Mr. Donovan Thomas and Mr. Williams were great friends. That is not true. Okay, but but you've so also... that's the nexus. So we're being we have to be able to show that there's some conflict there that we do not believe that in January 2015 they were as close as the defense is trying to purport them to that's be. That's the defendant's assertion. That's the defendant. Our assertion is that that's they're the not. Assertion, but you've also brought out the fact from numerous witnesses already that there was tension and beef between these particular parties. Not between Donovan Thomas, though. We ha People have talked about, but the person who can speak the best about it is Donovan Thomas Sr. because he had direct conversations with his son about his son's feelings towards these parties at the time of ending in 2014 and early 2015. All right. And, the, and the, what we've talked about in testimony is conflict between Little Wayne and Mr. Williams, not specifically Donovan Thomas. What has been purported, at least the evidence that has come out, is that Donovan Thomas, the assertion that they were friendly at the time in January of 2015. And this is in direct contradiction to that. And even if I, even if I, if I, well, if it's not, if it's not testimonial, what about the 403 consideration? It's so, certainly, because I do have to balance that if I don't, if I, if I do find it. So why would you think that this is high, not highly prejudicial, uh, more than probative, because, you know, you also got, um, I have to consider that too. Because, Your Honor, the state has to prove motive, and we have to prove a reason why this occurred. What defense has purported in opening, what defense has purported throughout the entire trial, there's no reason why Mr. Williams would want to have him killed. There's no reason why YSL would want to have this individual killed, and the state has to be able to prove motive. There's, we do, we do not have to prove motive. However, there is a reason behind, or the state believes that there is a reason behind this senseless killing. And so the state can purport and give that information to the jury. They can choose to believe it, not believe it, but they, we have a theory of why this occurred. And there's nothing prejudicial about Mr. Donovan Thomas Jr., excuse me, Sr., speaking about his son's feelings at the time of this murder. Um, uh, it's caught in the crossfire. <laughs>